faith and our reliance on God and uh, to provide in this season of restoration, right? It certainly doesn't absolve us from doing our part. Uh, it doesn't mean that we just get to sit back and give thanks. It, it means that, well, we work and we continue to give thanks while, uh, while we do it, amen, because we know the end result, right? Uh, a couple of quick announcements uh, for the House of Faith. Uh, first, if you're not following us, House of Faith Fred VA at Facebook, y'all, come on in the room and see the sermons and the thoughts and the activities that the ministry has going on daily. Uh, secondly, big shout outs to the clothing closet that will be providing food and groceries this weekend to anybody located in the Stafford, Fredericksburg, Spotsylvania area. Uh, COVID style, working, still working. Amen. Uh, I want to give, uh, speak a little bit on our dilemma that we had going on overseas. Uh, now, look, I, I know that when the sadness and the music plays, that we have tendency to turn off the TV and, and move to the next channel. But right now, even as I speak this, I am praying that as you make moves, God makes moves as well. And uh, hopefully one of those moves be in your heart. Right. And we know that uh, Pakistan is a Muslim majority nation. Uh, but we still have brothers and sisters over there, and they're standing up for Christ, amen, and they are persecuted, and the places that they worship in are burned to the ground, and I'm simply asking uh, for a donation of any size to help the good fight over there, amen. Make no mistake that the, the ministry is doing work in our community, but I'm asking us to consider the fights that take place outside of our back door, amen. Uh, consider supporting an international effort to help spread the gospel today. Um, so now let's get to our word. I will read it and then we'll go into prayer and see how far we get. Amen. I'm, uh, I'm on Nehemiah uh, chapter two. That's Nehemiah chapter two. Uh, so then we'll read it together. Uh, in the month of Nisan, in the 12th year, King Xerxes, when the wine was brought before him, I took the wine and I gave it to the king. And I had not been sad in his presence before. And so the king asked me, why does your face look so sad when you are not ill? This can be nothing but sadness of the heart. And I was very much afraid, but I said to the king, may the king live forever. Why should my face not be sad when the city where my ancestors were buried lies in ruins and its gates have been destroyed by fire? And the king said to me, what is it that you want? And I'll put a pen in it right there, and then we'll go into prayer, amen. Once again, Father God, we come to you, Lord, thankful. Uh, hearts are uh, ready, minds are ready for whatever it is that you want to do uh, for us, Lord, through us, Lord. Uh, we simply ask that once again, uh, we'll be transformed, minds renewed by your word, and that you continue to saturate us in your presence. We give you all the praise, and we thank you, Lord, for what you continue to do. In Jesus, my name, we declare, amen. I got to do it. I really need to find like an explosion thing. If you want to send me one, I will totally use it. Thank you. But uh, since I don't have it yet, I just, and then that's our boom. Here we go, family. All right. So when we last left off, Nehemiah was in a place where he received some news. And the news was troubling. And the news was shocking. And the news disturbed him at his very core. And the question uh, that was posed last week is, how do we react when we hear the news? How, how do we continue our path of living this, uh, this here life, this here journey, uh, when you didn't heard some news that touches you on your most deepest levels? Amen. Um, because many times it doesn't take that type of news to move us, does it? Uh, you know, just let a person cut you off in traffic or someone not show you enough consideration. Let a person be rude to you in the food court. And it would seem that for many, it only takes one slight shift and your whole day has gone from great to grief stricken. But here, here, this issue that Nehemiah here, it touches him on a very personal level. And what we examined last week is that how we respond to these types of challenges uh, definitely impact how fast we can receive restoration and how restoration takes place in our life. Amen. Many uh, spend all day and all night talking about it or dumping and being upset and just replaying the situation over and over and over and over again. And we want sympathy, we want affirmation, but what, what if we could have 
revelation over affirmation. That is what we said last week, right? You want revelation over affirmation. What if you could have a means to plow through your situation? Amen. Nehemiah goes into prayer and he asks for God's favor today, this day, right now, expeditiously. And that is where we left off from last week. Amen. Now, the in-between place uh, is what I'll just label it for the day. It, it's kind of difficult, right? Because uh, sometimes we must make decisions right then and there on the spot to stop the bleeding, to handle the issue. And then we got to do something. We got to do it now, 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 now. Or uh, we look at a situation and then it's tough to determine, well, do I make a move now? Do I hold it? I don't hear from God. I'm not sure what to do. And if you're waiting for that magical ingredient, Y'all don't have to keep waiting because I don't have it. <laughs> Amen. But seriously, I, I would refer you to our biblical teaching that says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything have prayer and supplication. So there you go, right? I know that there are things and situations and circumstances that make us think, man, I got to make these moves right now. I got to take care of this issue right now. And to some extent, uh, that may be true. There may be totally things that you can do in the background. And, I, and I'll give you an example. I had a business opportunity come to me, right? And they were pushing uh, for my partnership, right? And I saw um, that, that what the work was gonna be and I thought about it, but I also saw that this could be a very lucrative opportunity, right? And so for those of you that heard me last week, I'm sure you're looking and you're like, you said do something today. You said do it today, do it today, right? And, and I did, amen. Uh, I, I went into prayer about the opportunity, but also while in prayer about the opportunity, I was also researching uh, that company. I was researching the games. I was researching the plan that they had laid out for me. I was researching to determine if I even had the time to invest in this particular venture, right? Could I be the person that holds up uh, my end of the bargain, right? See, ultimately, uh, making the decision didn't happen right away, right then there on the spot. But there were things that I could do in the background that were productive uh, in my preparation, right? Perhaps many of y'all are thinking, well, maybe you want to go back to school, or maybe you're starting a business, or maybe you're following a passion and, and you feel that because God hasn't given you the green light to act on the burning passion and the burdens that God has placed inside of you, you do absolutely nothing. But surely I say to you, brethren and sisters in Christ, you can start the groundwork today, amen. You can start figuring out how much will it cost, what type of scholarships are out there, uh, today. Is there SBA loans available? Today, right? There are all types of things that we can do today while we're in prayer. Amen. And I mention the in-between place. Why? I mention it because Nehemiah really didn't get an opportunity and an answer and a stroke of luck right then there on the spot, even though he said today, today, today. Family, think about this. Uh, historians estimate that there was about a four-month gap between the time of prayer and then the first time Nehemiah, Nehemiah spoke to the king about the issue, right? The entire timeline uh, behind the scenes, I'm thinking my man was praying, right? I would even go as far as to su suggest a level of preparation is taking place. And I'll show you why this was the case. But anyway, let's take some more knowledge away from this text. Amen. Four months go by and Nehemiah is on the job and he's just working. He's just working. Now he understands that it is not custom to look depressed or off-putting to the king. Why? Because he's the king and he will kill you, player. <laughs> so you're expected to perform. I could share a great deal of wisdom on how you as a person will be expected to perform. It doesn't matter if you're tired or sad or depressed. There are people right now who are relying on you to make good on the responsibilities and the things that you claim you were going to do. You must be able to perform. And so for four months, Nehemiah knows. He knows because in the previous verse, he asked distinctly to be shown favor to a certain person. He knows where the conversation Conversation must end up, and yet it still takes him four months. Amen. Next point we make is that even while he is in his saddened state, it draws the king's attention, and the king inquires, What's wrong, sir? What's going on with you, Nehemiah? You don't seem to be the same. You ain't sick, are you? And so Nehemiah tells him the situation, right? He shares the tale with the king. 
And now think about this, of all the issues that the king has going on, of all the problems and all the things that the king has to think about, expansion and all the uh, the infrastructure issues going on within the kingdom. Uh, does he have to hear this person's issue, that, that person's issue, all the things that he has going on. And the king has time to consider and listen to your troubles. And I ask, can't we take solace that when we are properly positioned, our king has time to hear our sorrows, to hear our troubles, amen. And he cares, oh, he cares. Now, Nehemiah, uh, in his, resp is his response, first thing he says is, long live the king. And so, you mean, he not only understands company policy, right? He understands the policies and the procedures, but he understands the value in respecting someone other than himself. And that could be a whole sermon of the loss of reverence that we may have in our society, amen. Just look at our Christian culture. I did it. We don't want to dress up and come to church no more. We change the name uh, to service other than we go to church. The pastor has changed his name to something cool like Pastor Kev versus Preacher or Reverend somebody. Everybody wants to be down to earth and cool. I get it. But I just ask, how cool are we when we're in trouble, amen? When we are in our time of need, family, and it is dire family, do we really care about looking cool? Or do we place ourselves into a position of humility where we come humbly full of reverence to our king? Do we even have a practice of treating each other with reverence? In our narrative tale, the king's response is, what do you want? What do you want? I want us to think about that for a response, the power of that response. The king just asked you, what do you want? Think about the value that must be placed in their relationship where the king has responded to you and said, what do you want? Amen. If someone handed you a blank check, could you be trusted? Would you still feel bothered by other people's problems? Would, you, would that be keeping you up all night? Right? Would you still want to fight that good fight if the king said, what do you want? Or would you be swayed and say, nah, king, go ahead and give me a million dollars. <laughs> nah, king, I'll be, I'll sleep better. Go ahead and give me a bigger house. Give me a bigger car, king. I'll sleep good. Let's be honest. Many of us think that the woes of this world can simply be met by just giving a little bit to me, Lord. But how often do we consider that the peace amongst others can truly happen when we begin to value others more than ourselves? Amen. When's the last time that you went to church and you heard them pray for another church? Amen. Bless those people over there, Lord. Amen. If you were given a blank check, would you still spend it on others? And here's the next thing that we see uh, next week, family wide. It's critical to be behind the scenes uh, working uh, on those things, studying those things, because when it's time, when it's time that the opportunity shows and it's what do you want, can you properly express that? Can you properly articulate what it is that you're asking? I believe our word says, who builds a building and does not sit down and consider the cost? Amen. How does what you're asking impact your current state of peace? Right? Your responsibilities. Uh, see, some of us want a million dollar investment, but only want a hundred dollars worth of problems. Amen. You got to be careful and, and weighing what it is that you truly want. In this season of restoration, do you simply yearn for the things that you have lost? Or do you look for the exact replacement of those things? Are you looking for God to do a new thing? Are you looking for God to increase what you've lost? Are you looking for there to be something different in this season of restorations? And then there's the question of can you be responsible with it? Can you be trusted with it? Can he put what you're asking for in your hands and know that in this season it's safe and that you are worthy uh, to be a steward of those things, amen? Family, perhaps today you came looking for answers, but instead you got handed a whole bunch of questions, amen? But surely I say to many of you that your answers will lie in the way that you approach these questions, right? I'm all over them this week. And email me, and perhaps we can pray over them together, amen. Uh, today, as you go in peace, I pray that God may truly enrich your heart 
and help you to understand in this season of restoration, what is it that you truly want, amen. I'm going to go to prayer for you, and then we'll go ahead and wrap out. <clears throat> Father God, we thank you for today's word. We thank you for the points that have gone forward. We ask that it may be something that causes a stirring on the inside of us, Lord, a stirring that begins to ask, have us ask questions and have us look for the answers to these questions, Lord. It'll ask us to it says, let man examine himself. Let us examine what it is that, that we're looking for, Lord. Let us examine the passions and the things that you have put inside of us that we may come to full recognition of these things and that we may begin to take action on the very things that you've placed into us. We give you the glory, Lord, and the praise. And we thank you for giving us these burdens and giving us these stirrings, Lord. And we ask that you just continue to work with us as we uh, try to mold and build ourselves into better images of you, that we may go forward and proclaim your good news. We give you all the praise. We thank you. We love you. And in Jesus' name, uh, amen. So that is our word for today, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Once again, we'll be back next week and we'll pick up in our story and we'll find out what was Nehemiah's response and how that impacts our lives and what we can learn from those particular things. Um, as normal, feel free to hit me up on email, ministerjking at gmail.com. And uh, until then, I will talk to you guys later. Have an awesome week. Love y'all. Peace.